Hi guys, Richard from Forsyth here with Coconut. This is my Florida room and it's a pretty nice space. But this is where I want to put my studio eventually. So this floor was done with paint. It's concrete that has been painted with what seems like interior paint. There's all these marks and stuff all over the floor. And I want something uh, more conducive to the studio environment anyway, so we're going to go with a laminate flooring. Um, I will take you through the steps of how I do this. I'm not saying I'm perfect or an expert at it. Matter of fact, I've never done a room this size before. But I think it should be fun. And uh, let me show you the product we're going to be putting down today. All right, so this is a 14 millimeter thick click lock flooring. You can see it sort of hooks in place and clicks in once you get it set down. It has a built-in underlayment, this foam stuff here. However, I'm putting down a separate underlayment too because I want the floor to be waterproof since we're sitting on some concrete. Let me show you that concrete. Coconut found something interesting outside. Yeah, by the way, I do love this room. It's going to be sad to say uh, goodbye to all these windows, but we'll get there one day. So you see this is concrete. You can see that there's scratches all over it already. Um, little chips in it here and there. This is where they had to cut through it for some reason. Not sure why. But yeah, there's just scratches and stuff everywhere. And I want this to be a warmer room anyway. What I like is the slant ceiling here. It's got, this is going to be good for helping control some of those standing waves. There's going to be a lot of acoustic tiling down the road, I'm sure. But uh, it does have three prong outlets like every five feet, basically. Five and a half feet. So yeah, we're going to get to work. It might sound weird, but once we get to the flooring, the first thing I'm going to do is cut a sacrificial block. But before that, I'm going to show you the underlayment and we'll put that underlayment down. Okay, so this is the underlayment and what it does is it provides a barrier on the floor between the flooring and your concrete or your subfloor, in my case, concrete. And hopefully that's going to help prevent the moisture from getting through. We're going to tape these all together once we have them on the floor. And this stuff is like a flat sort of fold out stuff. It's easy to cut. It's not as complicated as say like a roll out barrier or something. A um, little bit more thermal insulation, but good for us. A little bit of a sound reduction too. So on the floor when we're walking around, there's going to be less of that thump when you walk on a hardwood floor. And plus, since the panels already have underlayment, we're kind of doubling up. I don't necessarily think that's a good thing. It may flex the floor too much, but we won't know. You know, this is pretty thin stuff, so we'll have to see over time what it does. I've already swept this floor and prepped my surface, so let's get to underlaying. Okay, so this is a basic foam and foil underlayment, so it's pretty easy to cut. Figure out where you want your edge to be. Now I'm trying to make sure it goes under my baseboards here because I'm going to be putting a new baseboard over this baseboard because they glued and caulked this board to the wall. I don't want to ruin that little bit of drywall down there. I just got to keep going. Okay, so I've got about a two inch overlay on my underlay, mint. <laughs> and um, basically right here, I got about a two inch area. Then I'm going to tape that off again, just to help with the waterproofing a little bit. What you guys don't see off camera is me fighting with coconut. Um, this is basically duct tape, but not like duct tape. Like this is the stuff they actually use on air conditioning ducts because they don't actually use duct tape on ducts. It's weird. Anyway, this is just going to keep it, hopefully, help keep it waterproof. I'll run uh, probably two layers down here. 
Okay, so I'm about to cut my sacrificial piece and I'm going to cut it from the side that I'm going to put towards the wall. So this is going to be our piece that we use to tap in the other planks if we need to. And I have a rubber mallet for that. The reason we don't want to cut off this side of the board is because this is where our next plank has to go and snap in. So this is going to be our first plank we go put down. Okay, so this is the first piece that's going toward the wall. Not really much you need to know other than leave about a quarter inch gap between the board and the wall. Your baseboard is going to cover it, but what that's going to allow the wood to do, since this is real wood on top, is expand and contract in different temperatures. Now we're in Florida, so it's hot most of the time, but there's a lot of humidity. And you know, on a winter day, you can go from like today, where it's almost 80 degrees, uh, to a night that is around 30. So on days like that, you'll make sure you have that contraction available. Hey buddy. So your next board has a little hook kind of thing there. Slide it in there. Try to get it up under this board. Push it down nice and even. Hold the pressure. All right, that's in there. You can feel that. And this stuff, we can still move it around once we get our first, our first few rows in. So if the room is not square, we can figure that out as we go. Get the wall. Get it set as close to the wall as we need to. All right, we're gonna continue now with the first row. That's Mittens out there. I brought her from the old house and she's doing really well. Uh, if you're familiar with the channel and the porch kitties, then you must know who Mittens is. So I hope that warms your heart like it does mine. That's not what we're looking at right now. Let's get down here. So if you measure from the edge of the click lock to the wall, not the edge of the actual veneer, but the edge, edge of the click lock, that's gonna give you the length you need for your next piece which I have set right here. The side we're going to cut is the side that goes on top of the click lock. So it'll have the under side there. We're going to cut this off at this dimension, which I'm about to go measure and come back and snap it in. Starting the next row, once again, the side without the bottom lip, or in this case, the side that's cut. We want to line up with our other one here. Trying to be as exact as I possibly can. Push down. Get it clicked in that way. Get your coconut out the way. That's very important. Take your sacrificial piece here. Give it a couple whacks just to be sure. We're looking good. Now we can keep this pulled off the wall because remember, this is floating. We can still move it around. Now look at this. If you take your cut piece, the piece that we cut short, so that that other piece would fit against the wall and start your next row with it, it, go, it staggers the joints for you. Remember, these are planks of wood, not bricks. So to me, they don't look as good when they're just perfectly even, you know, cut on the half. So the seam, I like them to be staggered. And that's what we're doing here. Okay, I'm on my third row. I want to show you guys just how cool this click lock product is. So... You put it in the horizontal long ways of your next row up. You make sure that 
you got your seam butted up right here. Give it a little tiny love tap if you need to. And then you're gonna push it down. You'll hear it click. Let me put the mic down here. Hear that? Hear that click? Then, using my sacrificial plank here, give it a tap this way. Same over here. See it lines up nice and neat. And that's it, I got it laid. Now I just gotta do that about 300 more times. I gotta talk loud because I unplugged the mic. <laughs> I gotta literally yell at the camera. This is where we're at right now. We have some exercise equipment that we have to move over here, but we're gonna put down some workout tile stuff first to protect the new floor. This is Sam. I don't know if he wants to be on camera. There's his hand. Anyway, coconuts help him. All right, my friends, I have the insane fisheye on. That way you guys can kind of see the whole floor here our whole situation that's going to be the gym area over there once i get some more of those kind of mats that go on the floor to protect the floor but yeah i'm gonna get a more reasonable lens millimeter here and take you around and kind of show you what i did and cover a couple things that i may not have filmed just because it's an intense project and it took a lot of time so let me do that and uh yeah let's do it all right everybody this is my sort of recreation room now you can hear the probably hear the echo in my voice this is where i can just read and chill out and have a good time like relaxing i love these chairs you probably remember these from the old house then over here this is going to be the gym like i said earlier a bunch of equipment but we want to spread it out a little more back and forth this way we got enough room uh right here i haven't built the new threshold but we're putting in a new door and unfortunately most of these windows are going to go away because I'm making this into an actual room. Eventually, it'll be the new studio. And then I'm keeping the skylights up there because I like them. So those will stay. But uh, we're going to be insulating the walls and everything. And also probably double painting those windows up there. And there's a company in town who I can get to cut the glass for me. The floor came out really nice. I really like it. Um, there were some trick cuts around here. So if you see there and obviously we had to measure this out and drill these holes it wasn't too difficult i still got two more bolts to put in but we kind of well i followed as close to the stairs i could but with a little gap so that the floor can breathe and we'll be trimming this up with baseboards i thought about putting the flooring on this step but i like that the step has some grip so we just may paint it with some grippier stuff a different color because i'm not not a fan of the prison bluish color there storage cabinet i found these old kenwood speakers here locally they're two tens with some sick tweeters in them just vintage uh i'm going to pop out these cones or the dust caps let me know if you want a video on how to do that i got a specific way i pop those out but they work and i got the wires run behind you can kind of see it right there underneath my threshold down underneath the actual floor to my old school receiver and there's the other speaker there and uh, also, if we're working out, want to watch TV, we got a TV there. This TV has survived years in my old shed. It's insane. I cannot believe that it still works, but it does. And it's a smart TV. And we got a coconut. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you guys know that you can do your own stuff yourself, just like me. Make your own space. Make it how you want it and comfortable. And uh, I'm excited that I got all this floor space to play with coconut, too, because he likes to run around and play. But uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Good luck on your projects.